I'm out in my garden today and I'm going to be showing you some successes and some failures that I've had here in my garden during my first two years here at my new house in southeastern Washington. We're going to start right here on my side yard where I've built three raised bed gardens, which have been fantastic to get everything up a little higher. It's a lot easier to work on to do weeding and to harvest fruits and flowers from the garden. Let me show you what I've got here and I'll show you some of the things that have worked and a few things that haven't. The center section of my raised bed garden is devoted to vegetables like tomatoes, peppers, and onions, and strawberries. This is probably the biggest success story in the raised bed garden is the strawberry patch. Now you can't quite see it from this angle, but when we get up close, you can really see that there are a ton of strawberries on this thing. It's just producing like crazy here in its second year. Right now we're in early summer, it's June, and I'm picking off about a dozen strawberries out of the strawberry patch every day, putting them on top of vanilla ice cream, or a lot of times just eating them right here in the garden, just hand to mouth as a little special treat. The other thing that has been very successful are these onions. These are Walla Walla sweet onions. For those of you on the eastern part of the United States, you would call these Vidalia onions, basically the same thing. We use these for cooking. They taste great, scrambled up into an omelet, for example. I've got four different varieties of apple trees planted over here in this part of the yard. And this year it looks like it's going to be a big success for the apples. They didn't produce much last year, but I've got a lot of apples growing on the trees this year. This one is my favorite. This is a special type of apple tree. I don't know if you've heard of the Cosmic Crisp Apple. This is the latest thing in Washington State. It's the best new variety of apple. These Cosmic Crisp are very tasty. You see them in the stores all the time now. It was even on the cover of Time Magazine as the latest innovation for Washington agriculture. Yeah, so I think I'm going to be really looking forward to this fall when it'll be time to eat some of those Cosmic Crisp apples. As I mentioned, I've got four different varieties of apple trees. This one's a red delicious apple. This also has got a lot of fruit on it this year. I think this is going to be so great this fall when I'm able to eat those. Now, I know this doesn't look like much right now, but it's just in the beginning stages. This is going to be fantastic later on this summer. These are zinnias. I had a huge success with the zinnias last year. They grow really well here. And I made these beautiful bouquets of flowers for my wife. Really all summer long last year, she had cut flowers inside the house. And then after a while, I still had so many flowers that we couldn't use them all. So I started taking them around to the neighbors. My wife's favorite flower is actually the carnation, and I've been trying for two years to grow carnations for her. I didn't get any flowers out of the carnations last year at all, but I guess it takes two years for these things to grow from seed. This year, it looks like we're going to have some great carnations in the bouquets of cut flowers for my wife this summer. Over here in this section of the raised bed garden, I devote it to flowers, but these are things that I don't cut. Uh, these are just to look pretty so that it, it feels great when I come out here. Everything looks so nice. And I love the way that this has turned out. And the beauty of it for me is that these drop a ton of seeds every year. So I don't have to replant these year after year. Most of what you see in this garden here has just sprung up again from last year's seeds. I love that. My wife and I love coleus plants, so we've got several different varieties of coleus growing in here in this section of the garden. And then there on the left, those are tomato plants that popped up from seeds dropped by last year's tomatoes. I'm just growing those in some containers, and I'm going to give those away to the neighbors pretty soon. Now, my wife loves to eat peaches, and so she asked me to plant a peach tree, and this is a big success this year. We just planted it a few months ago, and it immediately went into bloom, and 
all those blooms got pollinated and became peaches. We had so many, we had to thin them out because there was just too many. But we've got plenty left here, and I think we're going to have a fantastic summer with peaches for my wife. Along the block wall fence, I planted some berries, two different types of berries, and I don't remember exactly what they were. I think it was blackberry and then a lala berry. With the blackberries on the left, they have just been doing gangbusters with lots of growth. And then the alala berry over on the right side, not growing as fast, but still doing okay. You can see there's a lot of blooms there. So I think we're going to have a lot of berries this year. This photo here shows a very big failure from last year. These are some arbor vitae trees that got burned very badly in a big heat wave we had last summer. Here's what replaced the burned arborvitae trees. I ripped those arborvitae out and replaced them with these Leyland cypress trees. These normally would grow into very big, tall trees, but they can also be grown as a hedge. You plant them close together like this and then trim them with hedge trimmers into a nice 10-foot tall hedge to block the view of my hot tub. I mentioned that heat wave we had last year that killed off my arbor vitae. Well, this was another failure that we had last year because of the heat wave. I had a whole row of these spruce trees planted along the south side block wall fencing on my property, and the heat wave killed off about half of the spruce trees, just burned them to a crisp. So. I cut down and pulled out the roots of all the ones that died, and I'm left with about half as many spruce trees as I had before. So I got lucky, and it was mostly every other one that died. Uh, in a few cases, not, so I had to move a few spruce trees. Anyway, now I've got every other tree back here is a spruce, and I'm trying something different every other tree to replace the dead spruces and that is this tree which is a thuja green giant very fast growing large tree that'll grow to be 60 foot tall and hopefully someday block the view of the big rv storage building and shop that my neighbor has the lawn has been very successful. I always try to have the greenest lawn in the neighborhood wherever I live, and uh, that's definitely happening here. The lawn is doing great. And I love these four red point maple trees that are like the centerpiece of the lawn. These will grow to be 50, 60 feet tall someday. Uh, it's just going to take some years for these to become beautiful, grand old trees. Speaking of maple trees, here's another success story. I bought a bunch of these red maples over the internet very inexpensively, like about five bucks a piece last year. And when they arrived, they were just about two or three feet tall. They were dormant, no leaves. Uh, it was just basically a stick and some roots. And they've turned out really well. I mean, going from two or three feet tall to this one's seven feet tall or more. And I've got several like these. This particular one is in a line with those four maples you saw in the middle of my lawn. There's another one at the other end, so it makes a total of six of these maples that eventually someday will be big, tall, grand old trees. I've also got quite a few of these red Japanese maples. These are blood good Japanese maples. Very slow growing. Hasn't been a whole lot of growth on them, you know, a matter of a few inches a year from what I can see. But someday these will be 20, 30 feet tall, and I think they're going to be gorgeous. It's just going to take a long time to get there. I've actually got six different varieties of maples in my yard. This is probably the most unusual of them all. This is an amur maple, which is more of a bush than a tree, really. It only grows to about 20 feet tall, very wide very fast growing. When I planted this just a little more than a year ago, it was two feet tall. And this one's seven feet tall now. And I've got some others that are about 10 feet tall. Very fast growing, which is going to be great because this is the part of my yard that I see when I'm sitting in the hot tub or sitting on my patio or 
from my living room looking out the windows, this is what I see. And I want this to block out the block wall fence and the view of my neighbor's house, and especially this shop RV storage building that my neighbor has right by the property line. Down low, right in front of those Amur maple trees, these are flocks, and these have turned out great. I love the purple flowers, and these just come back every year, so I don't have to replant them. I just have to trim them back over the winter, and it just adds this great splash of purple color in the yard. I get another splash of purple color in the yard from the ice plant over in this corner of the yard. Now overnight and in the mornings, the flowers close up like this, but then in the afternoon with the sunshine, this opens up and it's just beautiful purple color over here in this part of the yard. I love it. We also get a splash of purple color from these baskets of African daisies on the patio. I'm back over in my raised bed garden for just a minute. I want to show you a project that I'm working on. These are seedlings from the Amur maple trees. If you look Amur maples up on the internet, you're going to see them described as an invasive species because they drop so many seeds that a million more Amur maple trees pop up all around them. So if you plant an Amur maple like out in the forest, pretty soon that forest is taken over by Amur maples over the years because they drop so many seeds. So it's true that seeds are, have been dropping like crazy in my yard and I've just been pulling those seedlings out kind of like weeds, but planting some of them here. And I wanna see what happens as I try to grow these and raise my own next generation of Amur maples. I don't have any room to put them in my yard, so I'll probably just give these away to the neighbors. Over here on the west side of my house, along the block wall fence, I've been trying to grow a hedge of privet, and it's going really well this year. Uh, the first year was very slow. I planted these a little more than a year ago. This year, they're really coming into their own, getting a lot of new growth. And with a few more years, this is going to be a great hedge to just soften the look over here on this side of the house so you don't see the block wall fencing. You see a beautiful green hedge. I'm out here in my front yard now to show you some of the successes that I've had out here. And it's going really well, actually. The lawn is doing really good, but I'm also really happy with this line of red ground cover that I planted just in front of the lawn in the rocks there. This is a plant called a creeping red sedum. And I bought these fairly inexpensively over the internet. They were very, very small when they arrived, but uh, they did well last year and even better now this spring. They're really coming into their own. I'm going to buy a lot more of this and expand this line of ground cover over the years, I think. I think it looks good as a little border to the lawn. Now, I did have a failure out here in the front last year. I had planted some rhododendrons in this strip right here, and that didn't work out. They got too much water from the lawn sprinklers, and also it was just a little too sunny there in that strip. So I pulled the rhododendrons out from where they were and moved them over here to an area where I had some azaleas and hydrangeas. It's a very shady part of the front yard, and everything's doing well there now. And now, where the rhododendrons were last year, I have planted calla lilies. They like the water that they're getting from the sprinklers from the lawn, and they like the sunshine here. Uh, they're doing much better than the rhododendrons did here last year. That's a look at what has worked and what has not worked so well here in my yard and garden over the last year. My theory of gardening is that it's all just a big experiment. I try something that I think is going to work, and if it works, that's great. If not, I just move on to plan B. And I am on to plan B on a few things here in my yard this year, but mostly things have gone well, and I'm happy with the way everything has turned out here in my yard on my half-acre property in southeastern Washington. This aerial view gives you a little look at my neighborhood, and as the shot gets wider and reveals a larger view, I think you'll be able to see our proximity to the Columbia River, which provides the unlimited irrigation water that I use to keep things green here in my yard. 
Now, I know that water supplies in much of the world are very limited, so I feel incredibly fortunate to be here where irrigation water is so abundant that they don't even meter it. A year ago, I made a video tour of my yard similar to this one. I put up a link on the screen if you'd like to watch it next. I think you might find it interesting to see how much things have grown since that video from just one year ago. I'm Jim Zim. Thanks for watching.